I was just going to bring into account can you make sure the new visits and new people where the parents can benefit? I've had quite a few young people say to me they can't go into the employment because uh, it affects the parents' benefit. The bedroom is not having anything else and they can't obviously transport there. So I think that's a big barrier and maybe we should take into account that the young people are young adults and that they've got their own life and they don't want to come to the parents sometimes. So I Just, just a little bit of a, a caveat, really, on the traineeships, you know. 
because traineeships are unpaid employment. And I think it's I think it's very, very important that if you do go down the traineeship uh, model, that the value added that the young people get out of it is fantastic training and you come out of that six month period or whatever <coughs> period it is with a lot of collateral because they won't be getting any money for it and you will be actually performing a job. So uh, at the very, very least, I'm not a great supporter of traineeships and people working for lobby. Uh, I think it should be supported through the trade union movement and other trade representative groups within the particular councils and, and, and look at that model really, really carefully and make sure the training that they get, if you do go down that road, is second to long.
relatively small amount of money can make a big difference. That's all we're talking about, a relatively small amount of money can make a big difference in children's lives. And uh, I, I often reflect upon a statement where people will work for money but die for recognition. And that's very true. And uh, one of the things that we, if we could all think about um, someone who's made a difference in our own lives, and there's people here who I know who voluntarily give their service and make a difference in, in, in people's lives. Some of these young, young ladies on the front do so in, in the youth work. One of the things we spoke about is how can we recognize the achievements of those who go the extra mile? And I'd like to, um, I asked my wife tonight to come and talk about what she does at Wood Church High School, but she was a bit embarrassed. I'm, I'm going to tend to tell you what she does. One of the fears that we have is we, we talk about this pupil premium where uh, a pot of money is given to a school and it just seems to get swallowed up. And so the headmaster or headmistress will decide how that money is spent in school. Now, one of the ways Wood Church High School, where my wife works as a teaching assistant, they decided what they would do is give the teaching assistants extra hours to work with people, uh, children, who, who would benefit from this pupil premium. So what they did, they identified children who were on, on preschool meals and, and gave them extra hour, extra tuition, working groups, and do all sorts of activities to help improve um, their chances. To, and so obviously what they're looking towards doing is how the, how the grades improve, uh, they'll talk with the parents, have meetings with the parents, do all sorts of things, open the lunch boxes, seeing if they're having proper meals, and all sorts of things like that now. I've heard similar stories about what George's wife does, and each of you will have uh, examples, and it's um, Plessington High School work. There's individuals within schools who are making a difference. And what we spoke about is how can we support those individuals who make a difference? Now, just talking about rewards, and what we laugh in our home about my wife works countless extra hours. She gets paid an absolute pit for what she does. And these extra hours she's taken on in Woodchurch to, to, to make a difference in kids' lives. And, and I know these kids intimately because my wife talks about them all the time. Um, but she picked up an extra 50 pence in her pay packet for all these extra hours. That she did. So it's quite clear that these volunteers, these individuals don't do it for money, do they? They do it because they care about children. And there's these individuals in every organisation, every school. But particularly, what we spoke about is how can we support those individuals those um, people in our schools, and when, I think we're talking about our junior and primary schools, who are making a difference in children's lives, and, and how, we can, how can we support them in some way with this small amount of money to make a difference? And one thing we thought we could do is to actually come up with, it sounds a bit sort of corny, but like an award, record, some way of recognising the efforts of these individuals who are really making a difference in children's lives in Birkenhead, and I talk to my kids and I say to my kids, who made a difference? Who is there who made a difference on your life? And they will tell you Mr. News at Press Primary School. And they absolutely love that man more than the dad, I think. And because he's made such a difference in there and he's absolutely loving to it. And each of our children will, will have someone, hopefully, who, who makes a difference. And what, one of the things we thought we need to do is to find out who's making a difference in our schools. How are they making a difference? How can we support them with this small pot of money that we've got? So uh, that's the kind of challenge we spoke about. We're not sure how we're going to achieve it, but we felt if we can support these individuals who are making a difference and help them go the extra mile and maybe get other people to, to likewise follow their example, then we will make a difference in children's lives and children's lives. Alongside that, it's enabled to gather what we trust in our
up to the advertise. And so they'll, they'll target the... Uh, Not the your area. area. The, the newspaper. Not your area, Paul. In Heswell, I know where you live. In Heswell <laughs> and, uh, and West Kirby and the more affluent areas. And the people who live in Tranmere and Prenton and perhaps the other areas, you know, Binston, they're just left out and they're not getting the information. So we're just relying upon these free newspapers to give the information out. It's almost essential to people to be involved. So what we want to do and as a suggestion to be made is that we actually develop our own community newspaper for Burton Head and that somehow we come up with a way of creating jobs uh, and, and, and getting information out to people and that, we, that the task group come up with a way of, of making this happen. And we, we know we've got some ideas already of some community <coughs> groups who would get involved in it and, and they'd get the newspapers out, they'd publish and they'd print and they'd edit and they'd write. And it's just a way of getting information out to Birkenhead that just isn't happening now. And also, if you think of all the, all the public bodies, the NHS, uh, the police, the fire brigade, all of these groups who produce literature to give out to people, and you see, you'll go to your doctor's surgeries, you'll see in your libraries, you just sit there. Instead of just putting that their budget, their information into producing these individual leaflets, if they put all of that information into supporting our project, we'll, we'll get that information out for them. We'll get the community newspaper to get that information out for them, and we'll create some jobs, and we'll get people involved as well. And that's one of the things we thought we could do, is create our own Birkenhead community newspaper, instead of relying on the private sector to do it for us. Um, very good idea very much in support of that suggestion. But when this uh, topic has been put before, councillors have told us, or council officers rather have told us, that um, we, the taxpayers, actually pay some of the money to the newspapers to compensate them because for the loss of the uh, advertising revenue for the three days. Now, there's still